Thank you for watching Concord United on YouTube. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. If you'd like more information about our church, please visit concordunited.org. We hope you will take advantage of our many opportunities to share Christ, serve others, and grow in faith. We are in a series about our real identity and how we have been looking at that is through the writings of the early church and particularly recently we've been looking at Paul's letters to churches that he engaged in and what we're looking at is that our we, we all have all different kinds of roles. We've had titles in our lives that we have held or maybe still hold but yet, ultimately, our real identity comes through who we are through Jesus Christ. That's where our real identity comes from. And today, we are looking at the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Galatia. And I'm going to read um, from the fifth chapter. I'm actually going to start with 13. The text will appear at 16. That's what we call, I changed my mind and added a little bit. That's what that means. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell those things, but I just did. All right, here we go. Galatians 5, starting with verse 13. And what I encourage you to do is as I read, think about the words that resonate, that stick out for you. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh whether, rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, sounds like a Netflix series or maybe more, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, forbearance, it's patience. You're like, I thought I got away with it, but no, it's in there. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is bigger than, you are bigger than all of what life bombards us with. May we have ears to hear today. You know what needs to be said. Speak through me, to me, and despite of me. In your holy name, amen. So Paul, when we've read, we've read in, in Romans and we've read in First and Second Corinthians and now we're reading in Galatians and Paul writes these letters to these churches that he's involved in. And some of these letters are such that he's like, add a girl, add a boy, keep after it. Y'all are doing great. You get it. And then there's some where he's like, I, I don't know. This is Brooke's interpretation. He's like, what are y'all doing? What, what did I teach you and what are you actually doing? And so the letter to the church of, at Galatia is sort of that way because what has happened is there's this group within the church at Galatia who are Christian. They're Jewish Christians, so their background is very much within the law. That's what they know. 
And so the argument has become about being circumcised or not. And this group is saying, you have to be circumcised. And, and Paul's saying, no, that's of the law. Like, no, we're by the Spirit now. We're about Jesus, and we're about the Spirit. And that is bigger than any of the laws, yet the laws encompass who God is. And so today, as we think about our identity in Christ, our true identity, we're looking at what Paul told the church at Galatia and how that is connected to our identity. At about 20, it wasn't about, I was 24 and a half years of age, I got this opportunity that I didn't think was an opportunity. I thought my life was over, but I showed up in the recovery community, alcohol, was beating me pretty heavy, and I didn't know what else to do. And so I reluctantly showed up in the recovery community. You see, I had no idea that the recovery community and the 12 steps are rooted in God. They are rooted in ancient spiritual practices that are found in scripture, such as surrender and confession and prayer and serving. And in the midst of that community, I got introduced to these sayings that still remain in my brain, that they come to mind. And one of them that comes to mind a whole lot, oftentimes, is this phrase, do I want what they have? And what I was taught when I came in was to look around, listen, watch, and see the people who have what I want. Not material things, not jobs, though there were times I was like, I wish I had that. But that wasn't what I was being asked to do. I was being asked to observe how people lived their lives, how they lived out the spiritual principles. And then I was told, listen, watch, do what they do. And so our question for us today is not just what do they have what I want, which is a question we can ask and then I can critique you about, no, I don't want what you have. But I can also turn that question and ask myself, do I have something that someone else will want? Do I have the fruit of the Spirit? Fruit of the Spirit by the Spirit, not out of brook, not out of who you are, but that our lives are living examples, that we live and we walk in a way that is connected to the Spirit. And the first thing that we want to look at when we think of our identity by the Spirit is our identity by the Spirit is about freedom. Freedom. We hear a lot about freedoms, and let's be honest, the past two years have been filled with our demand for freedom. Freedom to do something or freedom not to do something. And our, our ability to talk about that we're owed and entitled freedoms. Let's be honest. No institution, no person can give us what we think we're entitled to. It's never going to be enough. Paul is talking to the church of Galatia about freedom, a freedom that is bigger than anything that can be given by humans, that can be given by an institution or by simply following the law. He is talking about a freedom that is much greater, a freedom through Christ, a freedom to live and to walk despite our circumstances, despite what's going on in our lives, that we get to live free. Free by the Spirit. Not free because everybody does what I think they ought to do, though I may think they ought to do it. A freedom that comes not because of external things, but because of how the Spirit is alive in working in our lives. There's a song called, Where the Spirit of the Lord Is, There is Freedom. And this is part of the lyrics. In your name alone, we have been released. You are here with us. We are slaves no more. Freedom is our hope. Never looking back, 
Jesus, you are Lord. We give all to you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, chains are broken, eyes are open. Christ is with us. And so if we don't feel free, maybe we need to look at what we're connected to, who our expectations are related to, because our identity by the Spirit, it's about freedom, freedom in Christ. Because when we talk about the Spirit, it's about how the the Scripture says, some of the translations say walk and some say live. It is about how we walk our lives out, how we live our lives out, day in and day out, just not an hour on Sunday, not just one hour in the morning, but every day living a life by the Spirit and in freedom. That's what it's about. Our identity by the Spirit is rooted in, this is like fill in the blank, love. Love. Paul says earlier in Galatians 5, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. We can get lots of other voices, lots of other noises that tell us the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through people doing what I want them to do. That is not scriptural. But that is how I desire it oftentimes. But this concept, this thing about love, it is rooted in how much God loves us. How we are so loved by God enough that he came to be with us and he died on the cross and he rose on the third day for us. That love, we live out of that love through the spirit. Paul also says, serve one another humbly in love for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Can you imagine Can you imagine if just us in this room walked out that door and we lived out of love? And we can't do it out of who we are. We do it through God. I have been a reluctant Facebook joiner. I waited for a really long time. I was one of those people, they'd be like, I can't find you on Facebook. And I'd be like, it's because I'm not on Facebook. Oh, please. And I'd be like, I don't want to do it. And yet, I've come to see that within ministry, it happens on Facebook and through social media. But my social media of choice, I I like that term, my social media of choice, is Twitter. And that goes back to my days in education. I, I followed a lot of folks on Twitter, and it still is my choice of social media. And the other day, I came across a Twitter feed And it was a lady in Germany sharing her experience. And it was multiple tweets. It was a thread. I think that's what we call that. And what she said is she had signed up to be an option for refugees from Ukraine to find shelter in her home. And she received a call that they had a family that they needed that needed shelter. And in her mind, she begins to think of all these things she's gonna take care of before they arrive, things that will take a couple of days. And the person on the other line was like, like, no, like we're almost there. And that woman and her family took in a family that had evacuated, had left Ukraine, left. All they had was a bag. They'd been traveling for a long time. A mom and kids. And she explained, the lady who posted this tweet, explained what it was like to engage with the family and the reality of what was going on. And then what happened because of her tweet, other people were like, how do I, how can I help? You see, that is love. Not responding back, I'm sorry, I'll take you tomorrow but this love that 
we don't have to provide everything that God, the Spirit, leads us. And it is out of love, first and foremost. Our identity by the Spirit produces fruit. Now, I am, not only am I not musical, but I am not good with plants and stuff like that. Horticulture, I love them, they are beautiful, but you do not want to entrust them to my care if you would like them to live long. My husband figured that out when he entrusted some plants when we got married and within a week they were deceased. Um, so he takes care of all those things. But when I think of fruit, I, I don't have to be great at, re- at growing things to understand what it means to have fruit. And in our home, we have this exchange often in our house about the quality of apples. Are they mealy apples or are they good apples? And so I think of that, about fruit. When we think of fruit of the Spirit, it is what comes not out of who we are, but who we are through God. And when we hear this list, we hear that the foundation, that it begins with love. Not my opinion, but love. Love, joy, peace, patience kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It's like I want to go back and go, can I pick the ones I want? But yet, it's coming from the Spirit through our connection with God that we become more patient. And whereas before, or there's been a time in my life where I I respond quickly, that through the Spirit, I think to myself, boy, I want to respond quickly. And yet, it's not love. That's not living out God's work. God's word God's work within me and with others. Because we go back to that question, when I respond and I live a life that bears the fruit of the Spirit, then people want what I have, not because it's mine, but because it's God's. Our identity uh, through the Spirit, by the Spirit, is lived out in community. Paul did not write the letter to a specific person in the church of Galatia. He wrote it to the whole church. And that letter, his instructions, his words of guidance, of fruit of the Spirit, of freedom through Christ, of it being rooted in love, that is for us too. Our community of faith. When people interact with us, whether it's at the thrift store or if it's at the grocery store, Is what we demonstrate, is it love? Is it joy? Is it peace? Is it patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control? In our small groups, in our mission groups, when we gather together, do we help each other connect to the Spirit so that that is what we're known for, not because of who we are, but we are known as a community of faith that is rooted in the Spirit and that we have fruit from the Spirit. That is what we're called to. That is what we're created for. Last night, Will and I participated in the 5K. Don't be confused. I know Will runs marathons. It was not a marathon last night. It was 5K, 3.1 miles. And Will and I participated. I think there's an image going up. Will and I participated. Just for the record, I did not run all three miles. I did run a little bit. But Will and I got to be at the finish line last night when John Rapp finished his race. John had a stroke back in October. And like any medical crisis, it was life-changing for him and his family. Changed him, changed them, and it affected so many, including those of us here. John was working with a physical therapist 
And they set a goal that John would walk the 5K last night. And John did that. We have another picture. Will and I got to stand at the finish line when John and his family came across the finish line. John met his goal. He walked every step that it took before last night, and then he walked every step. I don't know if you know, there's some hills around the campus of the University of Tennessee. But when he finished, with his wife and his daughters surrounding him, as well as friends and family, there was absolutely no doubt about the fruit of the Spirit. There was this incredible love that was beyond what took place there. It had been a part of John and his family before he got sick and in his healing. Joy, like that's one of the most mind-blowing things about this, this fruit of the Spirit. It's not dependent on circumstances. It's in the midst of circumstances. It's in the midst of those unforeseen things that happen to us and those we love or in our, around our world that we bear the fruit of love and joy and a peace not because everything goes the way we want it to, but because of the Spirit and patience. I don't know John as well as you all do, but he strikes me as someone who probably likes to do things well quickly. What he has probably learned over the past couple of months is a level of patience that can only come through the Spirit. Kindness and goodness, watching his friends and family interact with him, faithfulness, putting one foot in front of the other, gentleness, watching his family and friends interact with him, and self-control. Truly an illustration of the fruit of the Spirit. And we have stories amongst us in this room of how we get to live out by the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. That we get to live differently than the world says that we need to live. That we get to live beyond our circumstances and through a God that is bigger than us and walks with us. And through that connection, we get to live by the Spirit a life of freedom rooted in love, bearing fruit, not just for us, but for a community. It isn't about us. It's about our God. And that's our real identity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.